from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. Yes, it is Tuesday, November the 2nd, 2021. And I just casually mentioned that yesterday was November the 1st. No big celebration, no happy November, no, hey, this is normally when the Grey Cup is, but actually it's next month, so, or put on the Christmas music, uh, which I did hear on the way to work today, flipping through the stations. Uh, but happy November to you. A uh, big month for the Ticats, of course, as they finish off their regular season and get set for the playoffs. Uh, of course, the chase for the playoffs continues as uh, they host the BC Lions on Friday, a game you can catch right here on the Ticats Audio Network. If you're heading down to the game, make sure you put us on for a Tiger Cats pregame starting at 6 o'clock. Andy Fantuz and I bring in everything you need to know going into the game, and then we'll hand it off to RJ and Luke, who will have the call. Uh, Got to get to some news and notes in just a second, just to let you know what's coming up. Coach Sal, John Salvantis, is going to be by for some uh, Tuesday salutations. We're going to hear from Dylan Wynn, and of course we'll hear from Coach Orlando Steinauer as well. As mentioned, some news and notes to pass along your way. Busy day for the uh, Thai Cats. As earlier it was announced that uh, the Thai Cats and the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board have launched a Our Cup, Our Community Educational Program. It's a program running from November 1st to December 6th, geared towards students in grade 4 to 6. Uh, and for both teachers and students with no prior knowledge of football, all culminating with the 108th Grey Cup on December 12th at Tim Hortons Field. Uh, there's lots of different lessons that teachers will be able to uh, download, an educational package that includes lessons, plans, and prompts. Uh, so very cool. Uh, we had Chuck Ely down here yesterday. We had Manny Figueroa from the school board. Uh, we'll get some of those audio clips later on in the week. So that's pretty cool. Also pretty cool is that Jeremiah Masoli was named the CFL's top performer for Week 13. His 17 of 24 passing attempts for 357 yards and three touchdowns was good for a perfect 158.3 quarterback efficiency rating. Uh, So congratulations, Jeremiah Masoli named the CFL's top performer. Uh, The third Ticat to be named a top performer this season with Simone Lawrence being named a top performer in Week 7 and Frankie Williams the top performer in week four. We talked to uh, Jeremiah Masoli about being honored as the top performer. Uh, you can catch that scrum over at tycats.ca. I figured since we uh, heard from him yesterday, uh, if you want to hear what he had to say, you can go to tycats.ca after we caught up with him after practice. Uh, speaking of after practice, we had a chance to catch up with Coach, and it was actually the first time we've caught up with him uh, since the earlier announcement this week of the four national players to the roster. And uh, Steve Milton asked uh, whether the amount of injuries the Thai Cats were uh, dealing with back on Friday uh, led to these signings. Uh, here's what Coach had to say. We got banged up pretty good. We were uh, shorthanded heading into the game, Steve, yep. and... It uh, didn't prove uh, any better as the game went on as we lost some some folks early. And so that was that was tough, but uh, really proud of our team. I think I think we persevered, overcame uh, so what I would probably label as some severe adversity in game. And so, yes, there for that reason, there is uh, a need to bring some other bodies in if we need them. Uh, now, that's an if, right? If you need them. Uh, so that's not determined yet whether any of these guys will. I mean, that's very short notice to get us into a game. No, but there's a chance that we, we may see all of them and there's a chance we may see none of them. And that's based on on the health of, you know, some of the people that uh, they would be playing possibly for. So there's no way to determine that uh, here on Tuesday. Uh, likely more to get the answers on that on Wednesday and maybe even as late as Thursday. Yeah, well, there's work there's work still to be done, Louis. So... Uh, they came out there focused and, and ready to go. Again, we're going to go with the two-day prep week uh, this week. Felt like that uh, their body rest was a little bit more precedent, but our meetings have been crisp, and I was pleased with the practice. Now, that might change after I take a look at it on film, but felt pretty good out there. Well, with Don, he's a self-starter. He's he's ultra-competitive. Uh, he brings a little bit of burst uh, back there. Uh Don also attacked, uh, you know, he was hurt in, you know, in training camp. And I thought he attacked his rehab with the right attitude and mindset. And then, you know, because we were ratio challenged a little bit and it kind of turned out the way that we didn't envision it, uh, he was put on the shelf for a little while. And I know he got a quick 
sample in there. We were able to get them up one week in there as a as a designated American or import, however you want to phrase it. And from from that point on, he's just uh, he's been a professional, right? There's no doubt he's ultra competitive. He's wanted to be on the field, and an opportunity presented itself, and uh, he made the most of it. And uh, you know, it's good for him and and great for us. No, I, I really don't. Uh, I appreciate you asking. I know it's a it's a big moment for a lot of people, and it's been delayed, especially for the the class of uh, you know 2020. Yeah, two years. Um, but, but uh, you know, that, uh, unfortunately, that's an uncontrollable factor, and I think everybody at this point in the game uh, understands the why. That is the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando Steiner, as he spoke to us after practice today. A couple of things in there. Uh, you know, high praise for Don Jackson and what he's been able to do so far this season. Uh, well, I guess in that last game and what he can do uh, for the rest of the season. And uh, he also responded to a question that Milty asked about the 2020 and 2021 Hall of Fame classes being inducted in the spring of 2022. So if you picked up the spectator this morning uh, you might have seen Milty's story about it but the league announced later this afternoon or this past afternoon uh, that the will the Canadian Football Hall of Fame and Museum which is right here on the fourth floor of Tim Hortons Field will formally enshrine its 2020 and 2021 classes of inductees in Hamilton in the spring of 2022 I was originally supposed to take part as uh, as part of the festivities heading into the Grey Cup this year uh, but due to the COVID pandemic uh, it was altered a little bit, so they will be inducted next spring. And uh, Coach responding about that uh, today. Also, we had a chance to catch up with Dylan Wynn after practice today. And uh, he had a great game, two sacks, solid performance for the defense. And he also introduced uh, what he called a modified sack dance. And I asked him about that after practice today. Modification. Nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh just, you know, Drake's new album came out a little too sexy and I figured it ain't it ain't that different from what I was already doing. So, you know, the camera didn't quite get it right, but, you know, it was a one off. Well, we we needed it. But uh, in the same breath, you know, we go to the film, we left a lot on the field. And uh, these are things that you need to tighten down as the weather starts getting colder and the game start meaning a little bit more. So um, it was just another opportunity to for us to put our product on the field and you know, it's always great coming out with a W. Well, the beautiful, beautiful thing about football is it's so humbling. Uh, so there's always, there's no such thing as a perfect game. So there's always, you, I, I find that it's it's better to live in the one week bubble and you just chip away at the things you got to work on. You bring it every day with, uh, you know, something you got to work on and you just work on improving that. And that goes for our defense too. And um, hopefully by the by the end of this whole thing, you know, we'll have a product that we're proud of. I mean, he's he's making the plays that we all know he can make, and uh, he's leading leading the offense the way that we need. You know, uh, the offense had an amazing performance last week, and uh, really bombs over Baghdad. It was it was super fun to watch, and um, as focused as I am, uh, we always joke around. I only see the highlights because I don't. You know, when I'm on the sideline, I'm not watching the offense. I'm trying to diagnose and get done, do my job. But uh, uh, I love Soli, and you know, it's it's great to see that success and um, just everybody having fun. When the offense is really, you know, playing like they did last week, it, it definitely makes everybody have a good time. Man, we're 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 at the end of the year. If if you need extra motivation to come to practice, you got the wrong job. <laughs> we're in the, the weather gets cold, and this is. You know, this is when money's made. So uh, we're all we're all very, very excited to be at work at all times. But, um, you know, we're on, on to the next one and ready to get working on BC. That is Dylan Wynn as he spoke after practice today. And uh, right there at the end, a lot of high praise for his quarterback and Jeremiah Masoli, who, again, was named the CFL's top performer this past week. All right, very pleased now to be joined by my friend Coach Sal John Salavantis for some Tuesday salutations. And Coach Sal, when we talked after the last game uh, it, against Ottawa, we kind of prefaced it with saying, well, it was against the Red Blacks. Uh, do we have to do the same thing here? The Ticats looked good. They dominated. But, well, it was against the Elks. Uh, you know, you can look at it that way. But uh, I think 
realistically, uh, Hamilton had to go in to Edmonton, play a solid ball game, and they should come out a win. And, and that's exactly what happened. You know, with, with the way the team is playing right now, they're on an upward swing. And whether it's the Red Blacks or the Elks or this coming week against BC, which, by the way, uh, if Hamilton's able to beat BC, that eliminates the crossover, guarantees an East-West Grey Cup, which everybody in Canada wants, uh, except those in the West. Uh, I, I really think that this team right now, behind the leadership of Masoli, is really starting to take form. And you can really hear the way that the other players are talking about Jeremiah, where that, that word, that key word comes into play and that's leadership. And it, it's, it's nice to see the players and it was never in doubt, but it's nice to see the players kind of back up their quarterback like they have, you know, publicly and, and with what they're doing on the field too. Yeah. And don't forget Evans is in that same camp. I mean, he backs up Jeremiah every play, every down uh, and, and works with them uh, in every way he can. So I really think, as we talked about in in this week's practice, I think uh, we're seeing where a player coach understands rest as as opposed to adding new things, becoming uh, more strenuous on the field, et cetera. You know, give these guys the opportunity. They now know what's in front of them. Uh, They can't worry about Toronto. They can't worry about Montreal. They control their own destiny. So give the players the leeway to become the team they want to be. And and rest such a key word there too, because, you know, they didn't practice yesterday. That means they'll only have two practices ahead of Friday's game. I want to talk about Don Jackson, because of course, a big game for him, 16 touches, 120 yards and a touchdown. What impressed you about what he was able to do in his first start as a tie cat? Well, there was a couple of things that impressed me. One, the tie cats went into the ball game, ready to establish the run. And so when it became the fourth quarter, they had already established the fact that they could run the football and Jackson was doing a great job with it. Therefore, he became the difference in the ball game because we talked about the leadership with Mazzoli. Mazzoli gets in the huddle in that late going and I I can almost hear him say, you know, hang on to the football, protect the ball, Stay in bounds. We're going to run this down, and we're going to run the clock at the same time, and we're going to score and walk away a winner. And and so I think the difference in the ball game was really the way Jackson played. I was concerned because Sirocco went out of that ball game early again. Then all of a sudden Yarborough was gone. Woods Manny has to move over and play at the center position. Gibbons has to come in and play at the guard. We're now, as you and I talked about last week, we're very thin in the line and we're very thin on experience in the line. And yet they were able to go ahead and run the football with Jackson and and make the difference in the ballgame. I I knew you were going to bring up the offensive line. I didn't even have that question written down because I knew you would uh, get to it when we talked about uh, Don Jackson. Uh, Defensively, a couple of late touchdowns, do those – does that concern you? I mean, they were one-yard runs. They were quarterback sneaks. What did you think about their defensive performance? Because I still thought, you know, even though the score was 39-23, I think the score was almost a lot closer than, than even the game indicated. Yeah, and when you look at what uh, BC and Toronto went through uh, over in uh, BMO Field, uh, you don't want this to happen to you at home against BC. And, and I'm, what I'm referring to is the fact that Toronto was not moving the ball at all late in that ball game, and Riley was coming on strong as a quarterback, and he had Burnham and Lucky Whitehead uh, both moving the the football for him down the field. We don't want to get in that situation in Hamilton. You want to take care of business, and you want to be very dominant, and that means defensively you've got to shut those two guys down, Burnham, as I talked about, and Whitehead, And with Riley, keep Riley moving. Don't let him sit in that pocket and read the defense and make the throws. In my opinion, you want to move him from the defensive left to the right, which means that Riley has to come out of the pocket going to his left, which is not his strength. 
if you flush him from the pocket going to the right, you're playing right into his strength and Burnham's strength. All right, let's finish up here on offense because uh, the emergence of Tim White has been one of the uh, kind of good stories of the season so far. Uh, you know, a guy who has uh, spent, started his summer training for the Olympics and now he's making an impact with the Tiger Cats. What have you seen from him and where do you think his ceiling is uh, this season and beyond? Are you there, Louis? Yep. Yep. Can you, did you, okay. did you get I, me I or did it come? I lost you there for a minute. Oh. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'll, well, I, I, sorry. I'll, I'll re, I'll re-ask the question no, here. That, that's quite all right. I understand what you're getting at. And, and uh, you know, he's really fit into this system very, very well. And I don't know what Banks' situation is as far as injury. And we won't know that for a while, but uh, White is able to get those deep routes going. And you saw Jeremiah throw a lot of uh, uh, what I would call intermediate routes, 18, 20 yards down the field, a lot of corner type routes uh, to those receivers. And then with Acklin on the other side, you know, it really balanced things up. So I, I, I think the, the receiving core did a decent job in that ball game. They need to have a big game against BC. Well said. Coach Sal, thank you for doing this. Appreciate it as always. Yeah, you're more than welcome, Louie. My thanks to Coach Sal for joining me, and my thanks to you as well. I did want to let you know, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, at B underscore TV, uh, you might have seen uh, that Luke Tasker and I are growing mustaches, or at least rocking mustaches, uh, for the entire month of November. In support of Movember, uh, we've launched a fundraising page. If you have a couple of dollars to spare, very much appreciate it. Uh, we will have some incentives uh, to let you know if you do donate, uh, and uh, Luke and I are just kind of working that out. But if you just search Ticats Audio Network on the Movember fundraising page, or you can go to Twitter, at B underscore TV. You can find the link. Uh, you can make a donation if you feel so inclined. Very much do appreciate it. But uh, yes, it is only day two of me rocking a mustache. And uh, there are a lot of regrets already. But it's for a great cause. So I will, uh, I, will I guess, hide my shame for the next month as I uh, rock this what I... Uh, calling a mustache, but it's, it's not quite a mustache. So anyway, Ty Cats Audio Network, search for it on the Movember page. Uh, make a donation if you feel so inclined. Very much appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. We are back tomorrow, same time, same place. For the Ty Cats Audio Network, I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day. Ty Cats Today with Louis B. Subscribe, like, and get your Ty Cats fix every weekday.